Welcome to part three of my piano tech guide. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about electric pianos, specifically the Honer collection, as well as historical pianos and other instruments such as the harpsichord, clavichord, virginal, and a little brief look at instrument morphing, which is new in Piano Tech 7. Here is the CP80. Now this is a cool piano and uh, it's interesting because it's got pretty much a regular piano action and uh, it's got a very short string scale. They're really little strings compared to a normal grand piano, but it's kind of like a miniature grand piano. It has less strings instead of three strings per note. Uh, up at the top, it's just two strings all the way through the piano. And, um, but it's got pickups kind of like a Fender Rhodes. Uh, so the strings, it sounds kind of synthesized, but it's actually got little pickups for all the notes. It's got a real piano action, it's got real piano strings, they're just very short, so they have a different sound. And this was, uh, came about in the 80s, I think, and just allowed piano to be played on stage without having to worry about feedback with the microphones. And, you know, obviously it doesn't sound like a grand piano, but it was, it's got its own sound, which is cool. And, uh, you know, I think Genesis and, I don't know, did Phil Collins use it? Probably did. Um, you know, a bunch of bands... <laughs> in the 80s, used it. So you've heard it and stuff. It's got its own unique sound. Pianette. Now, the pianette was also an electric instrument by Honer, who is mostly known for their accordions and harmonicas, but they made a bunch of electric pianos in the 70s around the time of the Fender Rhodes. Uh, they have a different sound. The pianette was a smaller one than the Rhodes, so it's got a slightly more cute sound, we'll say. <laughs> uh, do we have just sort of a basic kind of sound? Well, oh, it's called basic. And I also like how on these uh, these panels, purely aesthetic, but rather than piano pictures here, now we're in the electric piano territory. And the Honer collection is also obviously licensed by Honer, so that is again cool. It's just another sign of authenticity. So we have some different options here, like pick up symmetry, pick up distance. So it's a different sound than a Rhodes, but it's cool. It's sort of in the same vein as a Rhodes, um, but it's a little smaller piano, a little different sound. Uh, but I think it's cool. I like it. And we can also put some effects on it. Like, uh, let's, let's turn up the uh, tremolo here. And what else? Do you want to throw a, a chorus on it? Yeah, why not? We'll throw a chorus on it. And we've got an amp here, which also allows us to get some overdrive. So um, let's turn that up and turn the mix down.
So there's all sorts of um, some of the different effects you can get on the pianet N. Here's the pianet T. A little more roads like that one. And I like the electric piano. It's pretty sweet. Let's uh, let's do the fatty. piano is also a sweet instrument a little bit um, again just different than the roads now the clavinet the clavinet everyone's favorite instrument uh, you know I really should have learned superstitious so I could do the meme but <laughs> but I don't know it so <laughs> for the clavinet, but it's really cool. I need to, you know, play around with it more and <laughs> get some chops. Uh, so the clavinet has some different pickup options, um, and they did model that here, which I like to see, as always. Uh, position C is individual pickups, and D is dual pickups. And then you have... A, which is uh, in-phase pickups, and B is the out-of-phase pickups. If you don't know anything about the clavinet, it's essentially kind of like an electric guitar and a keyboard. Had a baby. It's um, sort of like a clavichord, an electric clavichord. And it's used in a lot of funk music. It was a big, cool thing in the 70s. Uh, it's a little kind of instrument. And... Yeah, it's, so it's got basically guitar strings and guitar pickups, more or less. I think they're pretty similar, so it's kind of like a guitar you can play with a keyboard. So here is uh, the individual pickups on A, on B, and then both, and on A. So, you know, it's cool. And it's got some, you know, bright trouble, uh, you know, basic EQ switches that the real clavinet had, which again, I love to see when they actually model virtual instruments with the controls of the original. 
Uh, it's always a bit of a disappointment when it sounds good, but it doesn't have all the original controls. And so this does a good job of that. I like that. I don't have the, um, the roads, but I can uh, give you just a quick uh, demo of them. Here's your doors sound. Cool. Um, so the before the roads, there was this piano bass uh, was the first roads instrument. And so there's that. <laughs> if you want to play that, it's cool. Um, there's some uh, various free stuff here. I don't know how much I need to uh, show of any of this. So all this is all included if you buy the software. You can get some bells. Tubular bells. Uh, the cymbalom is a cool instrument. Again, it's a piano predecessor. Now this one, if you want authenticity, it's not played with a keyboard, it's played with mallets. It's like a hammer dulcimer. So I like to just use two fingers. <laughs> too long I'm losing my mind so <laughs> my playing is a little, whatever um but you get the idea uh hey clavichord cool while we're talking about the clavinet now the actual clavichord would have shared since it's a fretted keyboard instrument, it would have shared some notes, so I wouldn't be able to do that on a real clavichord, at least. Uh, well, I could play them individually, I couldn't play them as chords, right? So, but this doesn't have that limitation, which I don't really expect. I really like harpsichords, and so there's a couple here that you get for free. Again, I love this, the attention to detail. Uh, you actually get some cool harpsichord pictures. Chords are fun. Nice. So the harpsichords sound really great, and even the free ones sound quite nice. They have some options, so harpsichords uh, can have, you know, different string options, and again, you have those uh, sampled, or not sampled, but, you know, modeled here. So that's the, the A and B, so that's with both sets of strings. And harpsichords, again, like uh, a lot of instruments at the time, have different ways that they were built. And as far as I know, very few of them have any kind of sustain pedal, since it's a different mechanism than a piano. 
there's no dampers to lift off, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they figured that a way to make a sort of sustain pedal, but basically it doesn't exist on a harpsichord. Um, now, some of these I like. This is one that comes in the Karsten collection. If you can see, it's got key switching, so I can turn on. Uh, these are both eight foot uh, sections. Stops, I should say. And if I turn them both off, So it's nice to have the key switching on the keyboard so I could do that live easily and it's pre-programmed. The virginal is also a really nice, um, pretty little instrument from, well, roughly the year 1600. I would assume they don't know the exact date. <laughs> uh, but the virginal is kind of like a very small harpsichord and um, it's got a delicate sound and I like it quite a bit. I'm going to go through the historical pianos lightning round here. having these historical pianos in here to play with and get a sense of how these really ancient instruments uh, sound. I haven't really worked on anything older than very late uh, 19th century, so uh, I've seen some pretty old pianos, but I have not seen anything hundreds of years old. Um, I haven't played on a recreation or um, historic like old piano fortes and stuff, so that's cool. I would like to. They have different, different hammers. Um, instead of felt, they were using deer skin. Uh, so the hammers are harder. They have a brighter sound, different string lengths. I mean, nothing was really standardized back then. So um, the sound of a piano today is a little over a hundred years old, basically, and everything going back to a certain date. <laughs> was just kind of all over the place. So they really vary a lot. And I think they're really interesting. I think it's fun as a person who likes pianos a lot. And um, also they make for great honky-tonk pianos. So <laughs> if you're into that, um, it's a lot of fun. I think this software is super awesome. And I think in, in other demos, there's other people on YouTube who have put it up against a bunch of different sample libraries. To me, it sounds, you know, as good, if not better. I often like it the best because the dynamics come out really accurately. And, you know, there's none of the drawbacks of sampling in terms of that um, performance when it comes to, you know, anything unrealistic with when the samples are switching dynamics or you know, so it just feels very real and excellent to play. Uh, and the tweakability of it, to me, just sets it way ahead. I love 
I love just going in and, and messing with stuff. I mean, I like experimenting. I like making stuff sound different, see what I can come up with. And there's just <clears throat> pretty much unlimited freedom to make all sorts of different piano instruments or even stuff that's not pianos. And you can't do that with a sample library. And also to get the amount of different libraries that would be comparable to this, the only other software um, that sort of comes close for that is Keyscape, which has a huge amount of different instruments. And it's a similar price. I think it's a little like around $380 for Keyscape. So it's got a lot of different um, instruments in that. It's got some great electric pianos. That's another fantastic software. And that's probably, I would say, the main competitor for this um, at the price point, at the flexibility. But um, I'm much more interested in piano tech because of all of the flexibility you have in the options. And it's really great to have software that can do that. And as someone who works on pianos and, you know, when it comes to repairs and stuff, um, the voicing, the maintenance, the tuning, all of that is, you know, really depends on a lot of factors. Pianos don't, you know, unless you're buying it brand new from the factory, you've had it well voiced and well regulated, it's just been tuned, uh, you're not going to get necessarily a perfect sound and this allows you to get any sound you want you can certainly have a perfect piano sound it sounds fantastic for top level beautiful concert grands and you can get into the weird and wild territory and um i suppose on that note right before i wrap up there's also this cool new morphing feature and allows you to morph between two different instruments. And uh, to demonstrate that, let's uh, do the harpsichord here. And the um, we'll just go back to our Model D. And this slider will allow us to morph between these two sounds completely organically. Um, it's not just changing the mix. I think it's, you know, it's actually going into the software and adjusting all the parameters that makes it sound like a grand piano and everything that makes it sound like a harpsichord and it's it's blending those together um, in a cool way so and you can also there's different options here like we could we could add something else in here but I'm not going to do that for right now and you can also uh, double the smoothing flatten um, I don't know so let's just see Let's go even weirder and morph, morph it with some uh, church bells. So there's all sorts of stuff you could do with that. I haven't played around with it too much because there's just an overwhelming amount of options <laughs> in this software, but that's a fun one. And, um, you know, let's do something a little more normal. Let's just take the uh, two Steinways and switch between them right here. Thank you. 
So that's a very similar instrument, but we can um, move between those two. What if we take the Steinway Model D and the Steinway Square Piano from the 1800s? <laughs> fun there. All right, so I think uh, I'm done with this, I hope. <laughs> I will definitely have more videos featuring Piano Tech in the future, uh, depending on what I'm doing and what I want to talk about, because I love this software and uh, I've got this nice new Korg D1, so I'm going to be doing some more piano videos in the future. Um, you know, I primarily do guitar related stuff, but I play multiple instruments, and uh, as I said, I work on pianos for a living, so um, the piano is a, a great instrument. <laughs> and so uh, I'm not a fancy classical pianist. I just like to play and make stuff up, and uh, it's good for composing and all sorts of stuff. So I will be doing more piano videos. I will look more in depth at some other things in piano tech in the future, perhaps if I have some cool ideas or just you know, use it in future recordings. So you will definitely be hearing it from me. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. And, you know, please like and subscribe, uh, as always. And um, I hope that the editing of this is not gonna, that's gonna be a nightmare. I've got like two hours of recording here. This uh, is not going to be fun to edit, but <laughs> but I will do it. I do all this as a labor of love for you. This is not my job, but maybe it will be one day if you support me by liking and subscribing. And I don't have a Patreon. Donate to my Patreon in the future when I make one. <laughs> if I do. I don't know. But, you know, I would like to... I have a lot of fun with YouTube. So I'm going to keep doing it, and uh, maybe one day it will be my job. We'll see. We'll just see about that. Who knows? Time will tell. In the meantime, play my piano, man.